I've made two name signs for my nephew's bedroom doors in a hand lettering style using a CNC. If you want to see how that went, come on in. Hi and welcome, I'm Andreas. The schools where I teach has had a CNC for a couple of months and I'm going to use it in my technology class so at the moment I'm trying to work my way around it and into it and learn how to use it using different projects and approaches and software and so on. So this time I made two door signs in a hand lettering style for my nephews to get the hang of the modeling and then having that routed out on the CNC. And in this video, I'm going to document the steps. It's not a full tutorial video because at the moment I'm a learner myself, but I thought maybe it'd be interesting to just see the rough steps that this project went through um, from the modeling, which I used Fusion 364, to the finished product. So if you're interested in that, let's get going. By the way, a couple of people recently commented that they find the background music in my videos annoying. So I'd like to know of you, do you enjoy the background music or would you rather prefer no music and just the shop sounds? I made a survey in the corner of the video and I'd appreciate your feedback on that. I'm starting here in my vector graphics program. It's called Affinity Designer. It's a Mac program, but there are others out there. Professional options would be Adobe InDesign, but there are also free ones like Inkscape, for example. And I'm choosing a hand lettering font. Um, you can get those on the web if you just Google for free hand lettering fonts. And in this case, um, I have several installed, but of course, at this point, you already have to keep in mind um, that this is going to be routed um, with a machine. So not all fonts will work equally well. So for example, if you look at this one, it might look very interesting, but those ragged edges might be a problem later on um, because um, they're probably not going to come out as well on the router. And for example, if you see these lines here, they're very thin. So you'd have to use a very thin router um, to actually cut this out. And that might cause problems in other areas. So um, yeah, just keep in mind when you choose the font, which one might work best when it's cut in wood. So now I have to export it in the SVG format, SVG, Standard Vector Graphics, I think it stands for. It's a format that all vector graphics programs that I know um, understand and can save as. Um, in my case, there is this box here, which is important. It says text as font independent curves. Export text as font independent curves. And when I tick this box, my text will be standard curves um, and Fusion will not know the difference between a circle, for example, and the curves in this letter. Um, so that's the, the option I have to choose to make Fusion understand all these shapes in these letters. So from here then, I export it. I don't do that now, but you know how to save a file. Uh, export it. And then I go over to Fusion where I already have a board. And then I say insert. Mine is in German here, but the layout will be the same in yours if you have it in English, SVG file. And then you choose the face it's going to, and obviously it's going to the top face here. And I choose the file. And now it's inserted. It's very large at the moment. You can see it here. I can turn this and make it smaller and position it. So let's say I want it here and I say, okay. And now I have this outline and now this outline has to become a shape. So I'm choosing everything around the letters and first close the sketch, choose everything around the letters and now say extrude and my board is 10 millimeters thick so i extrude minus 10 millimeters because i'm choosing everything around the letters and when i do that the board gets removed and only the outlines of the font remain so and this is now constructed and now i want to make it now i have to choose a setup 
And that setup basically says what part of my model is going to be used for the router here. I have to choose an operation and that's routing. Then there are some more details that I'm not going to go into now. You say, okay, it says I didn't choose any body and it will take everything. Yes, of course, take everything now. And I choose 2D contour because I don't route anything three-dimensional. The router just has to follow the outline of the font here. I have to choose a tool. In my case, it'll be a three millimeter router bit. I can adjust um, the, the speed that the router moves at and so on. Not going to go into details here. Then I have to choose the contours. In this case, the outlines, so that every line that I want cut is actually selected here. I have to leave holders in place. I want them three millimeters wide and four millimeters high so that they really hold everything. These are for especially important for such small pieces like this line here or the inside of the L or the inside of the A because as the router cuts this shape free, these parts might move or might break off. So I have to place holders in these spots, but pieces of material that will remain and that I will cut off with a chisel by hand later on so that everything um, is kept in place and not moving too early while the router is still passing along. So I place some at the bottom edge here. At the top, I'm already thinking about good spots where I can easily get to with a chisel later on, on the inside of the E. the hollow shape here of the L, the dot of the I, two for that, the inside of the A, two again, and that should be okay. There are some more details here, the heights. You can see that there are different layers. One is the, the layer on which the router will move without cutting. And this blue one is the top of the, sh of the complete model. And the final height here is the depth to which the router is going to cut. And here I have to say minus 11 millimeters based on the contours that I selected. Remember that my material is 10 millimeters thick. I selected the top layer of this material and I want the router to go 11 millimeters deep, one millimeter through the bottom, just to make sure that if anything is a little bit uneven, that still every shape will get cut out. I'm going on here. One thing I have to select is what's called Tiefenschnitte here in German. I don't know what the English term for that is, but you'll find it in this place. Um, I say, the depth that one pass should take is maximally two millimeters. If I don't select that, um, the router will go all those 11 millimeters in one go, and that probably is going to break off the router at some, the router bit at some point. So I say it shouldn't go deeper than two millimeters in one pass. I haven't changed anything here and I say, okay. And now Fusion is calculating the path of the tool. And now you can see the simulation. Every blue line is one pass. And you can see that it's going to take a lot, uh, several passes here along these lines. And here you can see the holders that will remain in place. And we can simulate that. There is a simulation button here. And we can run that and then see how that router bit is going to follow our outline. The last step now is to create the file that the CNC machine can read. That's called post-process. You'll have to select a post-processor that 
fits your CNC machine, probably just Google it, Fusion and your CNC machine post process. And then you'll find some sort of plugin that you install. In this case, I just choose this that I have pre-installed that fits my CNC machine. I say OK. And then I have to select a place where to store that file. And then you go with that file to your CNC. And hopefully, if everything went well, your CNC will understand how to route out this, this piece. Preparing this board would turn out to be a waste of time, but at this point I didn't know that yet. So let's see how that story unfolds. So the first attempt failed because I had forgotten to leave some holders in place for the insides of some letters and then when those insides became free they um, jammed the, the router bit and then the whole thing broke and um, I also realized that with natural wood the grain in some places where the, the letter shapes are very thin um, is too weak and easily breaks off. So now I'm going to make a second attempt with plywood in which I hope that the cross layers um, will add more stability and of course in the second attempt I have included those holders and see how it goes now.
So I'm really happy with how these turned out. Um, I think it's awesome how these round hand lettered shapes are cut into wood. Now a couple of remarks about the process that I went through. What you have to keep in mind is that even when designing the shapes of the letters, um, you have to know which router bit you're going to use. For example, um, this A here has a little gap. And if this gap is smaller than your router bit, then Fusion will decide that it cannot get through here and the letter shape will turn out differently. So I had to know I'm going to use a 3mm router bit and then I have to try in Fusion if the size is actually big enough. And in this case I had to open up this letter shape, letter shape a little bit in my graphics program, then re-imported into Fusion and so on, um, until this was at least 3mm wide so that this actual gap would be makeable on the CNC machine. Another thing, for example, was that the J here wouldn't have a connection to the next letter normally. And since I wanted the whole name to be in one piece, I changed the vector file and then made this little connection here so that actually this whole thing is one piece of wood. So that's something to keep in mind. And I prob obviously you, you cannot really know this beforehand. You have to try your own software and get your head around it and try to learn the details. Um, I don't know if there is a simple solution, for example, with, with the dimensions here, if I'm just doing it wrong, or if that's just the way you use that. But at the moment that works fine for me. Sometimes it's a bit of back and forth, but the more I do it, the more I realize the little uh, things I have to pay attention to. So these are the things that you have to keep in mind. I suggest watching a couple of tutorials. There are excellent Fusion 360 tutorials online. I'm going to link some in the description. A series by Lars Christensen, who's a real expert on Fusion 360, has really helped me get into the process. And um, Autodesk, the, the manufacturer of um, Fusion 360, they have excellent learning uh, materials on their website as well, complete with downloadable practice files and so on. So if you want to get into that, I think it's it takes time, but it's really easy to do if you look out for the right materials. So I hope you enjoyed this video and see you back soon, hopefully, for the next project. Take care and enjoy your woodworking. Bye-bye.